Hey everyone, I'm Emil, I'm from KTH in Stockholm, uh, and my work is about dimensionality in neural activity. So what is dimensionality? Well, imagine you're recording from a set of neurons, and then at each time point, you will have one point in a space where each axis is the activity of one neuron. So that's the state space of the activity. Now, what people have found that have made this data analysis is that this, these points actually lie in a plane, or rather in a hyperplane, because these spaces are, of course, huge. Uh, another way of seeing this is if you do a principal component analysis and you look at the principal components, you will see that you only have a few principal components uh, that, can, that is enough to describe the activity. So this data is from uh, prefrontal cortex of a monkey, and you can see that with maybe six or seven components, you describe most of the variance in this patent, pattern. Um, so this does not occur in a randomly connected network. So my question is, in what network does it occur? How can you connect a network so that the activity becomes low dimensional? And previously people have uh, tried to do this, actually quite recently, uh, by claiming that, yeah, if you have a sort of a clustered network, each cluster becomes sort of one dimension, uh, but this doesn't fit the data very well, so we need another explanation. Another problem with these previous approaches is that also animals, particularly monkeys, have difficulties to learn a pattern that is outside of this intrinsic manifold or this hyperplane. So this doesn't also answer the question of learning. So I have proposed uh, a new way of doing this that is based on population vector codes so that we assume that there are some variables that, uh, that the network is encoding. And then via some mathematics and uh, basically a scheme where you decode and encode the variables, uh, you can use this to, to construct uh, such a network that you will see becomes low dimensional without using any clusters or any artificial features in that sense. We also show that this network is biologically plausible in a number of features. And most importantly, that when we change the, the uh, hyperplane, we show that the change in the weight matrix becomes huge. So that means that it's difficult to learn something more if you assume that change, changing the weights in planes learning, that explains why it's difficult to learn. Uh, I have the more details in the poster if you're interested. Thank you.